What's going on YouTube? Flamesters here, and I know a lot of you don't know exactly what happened at the Halo Championship Series Season 1 Finals, so I'm going to fill you in since we were not on stream for that long of a time. I'm sure many of you have missed out. The event started as good as it always does. You saw all the day in the life of me traveling to PAX. We got there, you know, perfectly fine. Everything was cool. Met up with the teammates, had a good time, and then rested up for Thursday night and headed to the venue on Friday to compete. Now, just like always, we were going to match up with Cloud9. The teams invited to this event were only the top eight, so that means that we would have faced Cloud9 immediately in our first match. And as you all know, every time we played Cloud9, we would go to a game five, we would be down 2-1 in the series, and we would win that game five. This time, it did not look like the odds were in our favor. So we lose game one. That's you know, not scary to us. We usually go down 2-1, like I said, to them. So being down 1-0 is nothing big. We take game two, so now we're tied 1-1. We then go down 2-1 because they win game three, and then like usual, we are we have our backs against the wall, and we have to now win the next two games. So we take game four uh, pretty easily. I believe we win 3-1 on Sanctuary, uh, I mean Shrine Flag. Sanctuary is the old Halo 2 name, if you all did play Halo 2. And then we go to the pitiful game five that we always go to with Cloud9, and for some crazy reason, things did not, just didn't go our way. So uh, it was Warlord, Team Slayer, and usually, you know, there are certain starting spawns that you get, and I was praying to God that we got a certain spawn on the map so we could do what I think is our best beginning strat on that map. And we get that beginning strat. We open up perfectly, we get two kills, we get the camouflage up on top middle, which we also like to call camo for short, and then all of a sudden things just go the wrong way. The score is staying pretty evenly for the most part, where it's about 13-13, and then all of a sudden I see a score of like 16 to 31. 19 to 35 and I'm just like oh man we are losing it we were so close in that beginning battle section and then all of a sudden in the long game they just took off they were just getting every camouflage they were running perfectly in pairs we were getting trapped in bases and next thing I know we lose 50 31 so this was a devastating blow obviously after beating cloud nine all year long they finally showed up at the most important tournament in season one which is season one finals and they were able to take us out in that game five final no worries though there's plenty more to be played in the tournament obviously with the losers bracket it is all the top eight teams so that means whoever you match up you're gonna be playing a really good team noble black loses to eg in their winners round so that means we're gonna be playing noble black at the end of the night and the crazy thing about noble black obviously is that the people on this team were all people that at some point we were going to team with were on the optic halo squad and then ended up obviously we dropped them or someone left the team so we had aries who we dropped on the team we had Arcanum, who we were deciding at the beginning of the year who we were going to pick up over Arcanum and Ares. Then we also had APG on that team, who left our team during the time Ace had Mono, where we couldn't practice as much. So we knew that this was kind of going to be a grudge match. They were going to try their hardest, we were going to try our hardest, not just to get the W, but to prove which team is better and which players are better. Game 1 was Warlord Oddball, and we started off the game great. We had control, we were up in the lead, and we had a, a nice lead throughout the entire game, and then towards the end, we just started losing control. We went from a full setup to them making a great play to break our setup, and then all of a sudden their comeback began and they ended up uh, beating us in that game. Now towards the end of that game after we lost, Contra said that his controller was broken or that his reticle was moving on its own during the game and basically that's why we lost that game one. So made a complaint to the ref, ref said here's a different wire, uh, he got his other controller and then we went into game number two. Now game two starts up, lockdown, uh, team slayer and we play and pretty much in the beginning of the game well, uh, Contra starts saying the same thing. My reticle is moving on its own, blah, blah, blah. And the game is still early. It's like a 2-1 score or 2-2. I believe we're tied. Contra continues saying that his reticle is moving on its own. So I position myself in library in a safe spot where I can watch his screen to see if indeed his reticle is moving. Because if it is, then I want to end the game because then, you know, something is obviously wrong with the system and then we can't play at our 100% potential. I watch the screen for a bit every time he calls out that it is moving and I don't see it once really moving so I'm not sure what was going on. If pressure was kind of getting into the situation at season one finals or really what it was. Besides the controller thing that was happening to Contra as well, we were always on the left hand station if you were sitting in the crowd looking at the main stage. And the seat that Contra was sitting in, uh, there was either a problem with the mix and or the white noise that they were pumping into our headsets made us not be able to uh, pretty much understand anything he was saying. His voice was super low and Ace and Assault really couldn't hear him. I could hear him a little bit better just because he was sitting next to me. But it was it was it was crazy that you know his voice just got damped a lot down and we weren't able to hear him. And like I said, 
our team relies a lot on communication, so for us not to be able to hear them definitely hurt us in the event. Not saying it's what made us lose the event, but it could have for sure helped us done a lot better at the event. Long story short, we lose game two. We now have our backs against the walls. We are down 2-0 in the series, and we have to make the comeback starting now. Game three is Shrine Assault. We go the full distance this game. I believe we get the first uh, arm, they get the second arm, and then we pass the 15 minute mark, which means end of regulation of normal time, which means next person to arm the bomb wins the game. Overtime is done, everyone looks at the scoreboard, people got 60 bombs, 50 bombs, 40 bombs, it was an insane game. We replay the game now with, again, normal time, 30 minutes, it's first one still to arm the bomb will win the game, and we come out uh, firing. I believe we arm the bomb within like three, four minutes, which was crazy because we just went through 30 minutes and we couldn't do it then, but we were able to transition and arm it right away. So now we are down 2-1 in the series. That would be it for our losers bracket run. The uh, game number four was pretty much in their control. We had uh, a good positioning through the middle point of it, but then we just lost it. They just took total map control and uh, held it down, and uh, we finished with 7-8, taking home $2,000 as a team. Obviously, it's not the situation we wanted to end up in. 7-8 is nothing we thought we would place. We placed top four all year long, and for us to have our worst showing at the most important tournament is such a uh, it's such a killer. It it's, hits you deep in the, in the heart, obviously, because, like I said, we placed great all year long, and then in the most important tournament, it stuff just didn't go our way. Following now the tournament, we have also dropped Contra off our team. Not because he's a bad player, I think he's a great individually skilled uh, player, but he just didn't fit the role or the play style of myself, Assault and Ace, or, and that's what we all thought as a team. So we want to really find that perfect fourth for season two. And I think a lot of teams are going to be starting team change as well because EG, I believe now, has only dropped four games in two events in a row that they won so seeing that just tells you that this is a real team these guys are solid you need to kind of make some new team changes in order to dethrone the champs expecting a lot of team changes not besides ours i'm sure there's going to be a lot of different halo team changes coming out of these next weeks and it's going to be crazy to see now the different formations of players joining each other it's going to be exciting it's going to be wild it's going to be hectic but we are going to find that perfect fourth for the team and i can't wait till we do find them and then start grinding it out sorry we let you all down with the seventh eighth place in this week season two is going to be completely different i am definitely going to be playing a lot more a lot of my things or priorities and you know obligations that I do have are going to be ending at the beginning of this year. I've been flying a lot, doing a lot of other things outside of uh, competing in Halo, doing other gaming stuff, because I am 25 all, so I am always trying to make a living while I am competing at Halo, so I'm always doing other little things that people don't really see unless uh, they are behind the scenes. So I'm always trying to make an income for myself so I could support myself and being able to play and compete in Halo as long as possible. And with those obligations pretty much coming almost to an end, Season 2 is falling in the perfect spot because now I know I'm going to be able to play a lot more. So I know a lot of people have been seeing uh, they don't practice as much and you know that could be kind of part of me because of doing all those obligations. But Season 2 is going to be completely different all, so I'm excited for it, Ace is excited for it, Assault's excited for it. I'm actually at Assault's house, that's why you're like, wait, whose room is this, Flanger? I've never seen you here. So I'm going to be here probably for one more week. We're doing those Optic Fit videos for you all because a lot of you keep asking me, Flames, for what's your workout routine? Get us all with you and some workout stuff. So that's exactly what we're doing this week. And then I will be returning to the Optic House. Expect a few more pack studios coming out throughout this week and then some workout videos to follow in the next week or the week after once I get back to the Optic House so I could edit them all in Sony Vegas. Hope you all enjoyed this little information of the tournament. I hope you all are expecting some fun stuff coming out of this Optic Fit stuff. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. And as always, this is your boy Flamesword. I'll see you guys later. Peace.